Speaking Human. Today on Speaking Human, we terrify our listeners with blood-curdling reactions to the latest gruesome collection of horrifying Halloween commercials from ravenous brands who want to rip out your eyeballs, hold your beating heart in their hands, and devour the dollars in your wallet. Speaking Human. Welcome to Spooking Human, the official podcast of Monsters Unlimited, a killer creative agency with a deliciously juicy business brain that brings all the zombies to the yard. (laughs) I'm Shad Conley, Communications Director at Monsters Unlimited, and I don't know if you know this, Patrick, but I actually get all my marketing powers by feeding off the life force of our listeners. Don't even suspect a thing. It's scary. Very. Well, I'm Count Jebber, creative director at Monsters Unlimited. Did you know that about me? That I'm a count? I did I didn't know you got the title of Count. Congratulations. Yeah, you know. It's usually right after you become part of the undead. Take it how you get it. <laughs> this is your first time checking out the podcast. Our goal on Speaking Human is to simplify murderously complex marketing topics. We toss aside all the blood-soaked buds words and morbid mumbo-jumbo to focus on how marketing can bring brands and people together to fight off ferocious demons. On today's episode, we shriek our shocking opinions on this year's haunted Halloween advertising from a trio of bloodthirsty brands. So let's grab those chainsaws and get some podcast guts flying. Let's hide in the attic. No, in the basement. Why can't we just get in the running car? Are you crazy? <laughs> Let's hide behind the chainsaws. Smart. <laughs> yeah, okay. What you just heard was a clip from a recent Geico commercial capitalizing on the horrific holiday we call Halloween. That's one of three new Halloween commercials we'll be discussing on today's show. But before we get started, Patrick, can you tell our listeners who may not know a couple things? One, just what is this Halloween thing? And two, why you're holding a severed head right now? Ooh, well, I can start with what Halloween is. I don't know if you know this, Shad, but Halloween is a contraction of All Hallows' Evening, also known as All Hallows' Eve, also known as All Saints' Eve. Did you know that? That's a lot of AKAs. I did not. I kind of knew some of it, maybe. (laughs) Let me tell you, this whole podcast is just going to be me talking about the history of Halloween. Really, I'm serious. It's a yearly celebration observed in a number of countries, as everyone should know, on October 31st. It initiates All Hallow Tide. It's that time in the liturgical year dedicated to remembering the dead, including saints and martyrs and all the faithful departed believers. Did you know that? No, what an, what an incredibly helpful description. It is. It's actually from Wikipedia, but I figured I'd, I'd throw it out there. Typical festivals in Halloween activities <laughs> include trick-or-treating, <laughs> attending costume parties, decorating, carving pumpkins into jack-o'-lanterns, lighting bonfires, apple bobbing, visiting haunted house attractions, playing pranks, telling scary stories, and watching horror films. Did you know that? I mean, that's a lot of stuff. Now, being serious right now, this is how Halloween ties into at least some of the marketing we're going to talk about today. The traditional focus of All Hallows' Eve revolves around the theme of using humor and ridicule to confront the power of death. Ooh. Did you know that? I didn't know that, but I like that. Yeah, and that's how I think some of the the, the ads we're talking about today, uh, they tie into the marketing because, you know, they are using humor and a little bit of ridicule. I don't know if they're confronting the power of death, you know. Well, aren't we always confronting the power of death? Death meaning horrible sales, maybe. So if they're confronting horrible sales, they're confronting the power of horrible sales and saying, no, we're going to get better results through these ads. And isn't horrible sales worse than death in a lot of ways? Oh, it is. In many ways. Many, many ways. So many ways. Uh, Anyway, do you have any more Halloween facts you'd like to share from Wikipedia? (laughs) (laughs) No, I don't. That's it. I just wanted to clarify what Halloween was so that just in case our listeners haven't been, you know, part of this world. All right. From there, let's, you know, let's move on. Let's get into the bloody meat of this thing. Uh, We're going to be talking about a few different commercials, you know, who use that humor and ridicule to confront death today. But before we get into that, let's just see where we're coming from on this. Patrick, what's your experience with Halloween? How do you feel about this holiday? Do you like it? Is it fun for you? 
Well, it's weird that you ask me that because I can't really remember a time in my life that Halloween didn't exist. Uh, it's like it's always been there, lurking in the dark, waiting for me each year. It's kind of scary, actually. In all, in all seriousness, again, I, I do actually enjoy Halloween. It's one of my favorite. So you feel like Halloween is, has been stalking you since you were a small child? Oh, well, you know, since I was a baby. <laughs> Um, I'm also a big fan of Halloween. It's probably the funnest of the holidays because it's the weirdest. Mm -hmm. You dress up in costumes, you know, you do stuff with blood, you confront death. I remember being a kid, one of my favorite things was, you know, on the sitcoms, they'd always have like the Halloween episode. Where oh, everybody yeah. dress up in costumes. I was a big fan of that. Yeah, my least favorite part of the holiday of Halloween is buying the candy. And I'll tell you why. It's not because I, I don't want to buy the candy. It's I never know how much to buy because every year is a little different with the kids, you know. One year we'll have like 80,000 kids running through our neighborhood and the next year we'll have like six. I bought enough for 80,000 kids because we had them the last year, you know what I mean? Yeah, so you're either eating candy until you die or yeah. you run out and then everybody hates your house. Then I'm that guy. I turn off my porch light, and all the kids are like throwing things at me. And there's that old mean man. Didn't Get him! Enough, you didn't have enough candy. You didn't have enough Skittles for me. Well, enough about us. Let's get into some marketing stuff. So the first ad we're going to be talking about is from Skittles, and it's actually Skittles' first ever Halloween ad, which seems crazy, right? And there's two versions. There's a 15 second version and a 45 second version. The 15 second version features a kid in a, a giant spider web trying to reach some Skittles and his friend's watching and then he says, you want me to help you? And then from behind him, a giant spider sort of comes down and in a very smooth voice says, yeah, definitely go up there and help him. There's a longer version where there's kind, kind of some twist to that story and it doesn't end quite the way you expect. Uh, of course, you can find all the commercials we're talking about today in our show notes on speakinghuman.com. But Patrick, so the Skittles ad, Skittles first ever Halloween ad, what did you think of it? Well, I'll just say this. Halloween is such a fun time of year for marketing, I feel like, because it provides companies with the opportunity to be adventurous with their advertising. And Skittles isn't the type of candy company that plays it safe. I mean, they do a lot of really, really weird commercials. So this one isn't really far off from what their typical ad would do. But Halloween gives you know all businesses a chance to do advertising a little bit different and to do it with little regret. Because I feel like Halloween is that standalone trickster holiday. You know what I mean? Like they could do it yeah. and they, they don't have to worry about all of the repercussions that they would in a normal calendar year of marketing and advertising. No, that's something I noted too. You know, you definitely have a, it's a little looser. You have more opportunities to do stuff without being scrutinized quite as much, which is cool. And it is definitely a chance to do stuff that's a lot more fun. And I think what's interesting about the, the Skittles ad is not necessarily the ads themselves, you know, which are, they do fit that kind of Skittles mold of humor, which I like generally. But what I thought was more interesting or what caught my attention was how they did these. You know, there's this shorter video, which stands alone and it's funny, but then you go into the kind of the longer video, which takes what you thought you were seeing, twists it in a whole different direction and makes it funny kind of in an entirely different way which I think is a really interesting idea. You know, it sparks something where I'm thinking, wouldn't it be cool if they did something, you know, you have a, a 15 second version, a 45 second version, a two minute version, you know, maybe you could do like five different more till it gets to like 10 minutes long. <laughs> and each time it kind of completely twists the narrative, you know, when you add on this extra section, that's a really interesting idea. And I think something fun you could do with online video, not necessarily with commercial. Yeah, well, and you're starting to see that a little bit more, you know, when we covered the uh, Dukes of Hazard Auto Trader ad, you know, they had one that was cut down for really short commercial spots on television. And then they had the longer one, which told this whole story and they pieced and parted it together to make a longer narrative. And although it's a little different in that they didn't twist the narrative like they did in this one, but it was... Um, but it was fun nonetheless. And I think that's what all these advertisers are doing. They're taking these online ads and just having more fun with them and, you know, experimenting. Yeah. And well, because you have online now, you have kind of a place where you can do longer versions or you can throw out videos and use them to grab attention. Whereas otherwise they just kind of sit in scraps on the cutting room floor. By mm -hmm. the way, the episode you mentioned, uh, episode number 21 of Speaking Human, the Dukes of Auto Trader. Grab it in iTunes or speakinghuman.com. So yeah, I really liked the Skittles ad and I liked how they did that. And I think it's something I would like to see them experiment with in the future, especially for the 
strange kind of ads they do. I think that would fit with their branding. I think it's it's open for expansion. It's ripe for it. So moving on to our next, our second commercial here, our second Halloween spooky commercial. This one comes from Geico. Patrick, do you want to tell the folks a little bit about this one? Yeah. So in this ad, we've got some teens who are in a horror movie type of situation where they just make dumb decision after dumb decision. And they're presented with an option, for example, of getting in a running car to get away from these horrible acts that are about to happen to them. You don't know what they are. Or they could go into a shed with a bunch of chainsaws and they choose to go into the shed. All the issues that most people have with horror movies, like why can't that person run without tripping through the forest? (laughs) Why do they keep tripping or hiding in the basement? You know, because who, who hides in the basement, Chad? Why are they running to the graveyard? Why are they hiding what? in the attic? Why are they going to places where they're boxed in? Exactly. So I think they did a great job of tying these typical situations in a horror movie to bad decisions and then tying it back into make better decisions with your insurance calling Geico. Yeah. yeah, there was definitely a good message tie in here. And I do like that concept, you know, because they're... Horror movies are definitely open to parody for that. A lot of what you see in like those scary movies or a better example, um, a movie I know both of us really liked, kind of played on these horror movie tropes was Cabin in the Woods. They kind of give you the reasons why people are making all these dumb decisions. And so I thought that was kind of cool. It's another one that I think is open to a series. You know, there's, it made me think more of there's a lot of different ways you could play on this concept here. Sometimes I just see something and you think of the potential of all the other things they could do with it. Yeah. Well, and one of the things I was going to say, they're very well done. Cinematography is done really well in these. And they're not really big budget, but, you know, they've got sets and props and things like that. So budget wise, I think, you know, they're not super expensive, but something that you could easily do on a decent budget. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's another thing. Once you get these kind of Halloween concepts and you're playing on them, that's kind of the attraction point right there. You don't have to think of something more elaborate, you know, or an attention grabbing. That's kind of your whole selling point right there is selling through the holiday. Mm -hmm. The message is paramount to everything else. You know, I always tend to lean towards the humorous side of Halloween, maybe because it's a holiday that is used humor and ridicule to confront the power of death. I don't know, maybe. (laughs) But, you know, using that humor, you know, if you have a great concept, I think that's crucial. Yeah. And you can say that for just about anything, you know, you have budgetary restraints or anything like that. A good concept and a solid message will go a long way. Look at horror movies. A lot of them are very low budget, kind of cheap looking. So there's a lot you can do with that on a limited budget. Blair Witch Project or whatever that was called shot for like a dollar. So you can definitely shoot a a commercial or ad for relatively inexpensive. Because people are used to that style. So especially here where you're playing with like parody and stuff. Yeah. Geico ad solid. The guy, the chainsaw guy also has an interesting face. Yeah. Good acting there. You know, it's like, what? So our final Halloween commercial of the day (laughs) is uh, from Subway. And this one stirred up a little bit of controversy. So what's happening in this ad is we've got, looks like I think some coworkers are sitting there having lunch and one lady's eating Subway and she looks at her coworkers who are eating burgers and she's like, what are you doing eating burgers? It's Halloween time. You need to eat Subway so you can fit in your sexy costume and then they flash to her in a series of you know sexy librarian sexy witch i don't know what they all are but there's like five different ones you know and they're all kind of like sexy viking yeah there is a sexy viking actually you're not even making that up so the whole message being eat subway so you can fit in your tight sexy halloween costume A lot of people thought this came off as sexist. Didn't go over real well with a lot of people. I've even seen it disappearing some places online where it was embedded. So it caused a little bit of controversy. What did you think of the ad, though, Patrick? Well, remember how I said that companies could experiment with Halloween marking with little regret? (laughs) This is the little regret I was talking about. Well, I wouldn't have given this ad a second thought because to me, it's not overly creative, original, or funny. It's definitely not PC. It's objectifying women. Would you have picked up on that if you didn't hear about the controversy? Would would you have caught that, I guess? You know, I immediately recognized it. Like, we would have never put something out like this just because for a big brand like that, you have to be very, very sensitive to ethnicities and genders and all kinds of things in ads. I look at it and I'm okay with the idea there. They're like playing off of the sex of 
terrifying of Halloween that kind of young people do, mm-hmm. where everything is, you know, every costume is turned into a sexy costume. I'm okay with that, but the execution here is just kind of awful. First of all, you know, what's the message here? The message is eat Subway so you can be skinnier to fit in your sexy Halloween costumes. Ugh. Maybe if they did it with a woman and a man instead of just doing it with a woman. And then some of it's just weird. Like, these are co-workers? So then this is the lady showing her co-workers different costumes. I wasn't sure what was going on. It was just a whole big mess. You know, I talked about concept and message. And there might have been an inkling of a concept. It wasn't really developed here. And then the message is just totally off. Put them together and you got just a mess. I agree. There's so many weird, awkward, situational things here. You know, like you said, being in front of your co-workers, which is like the... (laughs) The epitome of an HR nightmare. Hello, let me show you my underwear. Yeah, and it's one of those things too, like why not make them just friends? Yeah. They didn't seem like friends. I don't know, I didn't get that impression anyway. Yeah, so this one, we talked about uh, like the Airbnb logo before, and you're like, if people didn't mention some of this stuff, would you notice it? And I was like, I don't know. Here, I think this is one of those things you would see and kind of be like, even if it doesn't offend me, I could see how it would offend somebody else. You know, maybe we're walking a line here. Maybe we shouldn't. A a red flag would probably go up. Yeah. Well, definitely, if you're part of the team, you would think you would see that. Like I said, I probably wouldn't even have noticed it because, A, I wouldn't have seen it online. I highly doubt. And B, on television, I would have fast forwarded to that DVR. (laughs) (laughs) See, I don't want to knock anybody, but Subway's marketing is fairly bland for the most part. You know, you remember Jared, Mm -hmm. but I don't remember them. This even seems outside what they normally, the tone they normally try to go for with their commercials. Yeah, I just don't feel like they're that brand. No, you not know, at all. Not like at all. You, a great counterexample is GoDaddy. Look how many times they've objectified women in their ads. And maybe it was less jarring because that was their marketing. That was like the basis of their marketing. Yeah. So boy, this just kind of seems like out of the blue. Yeah, I guess maybe people are more angry at the fact that they think of Subway as maybe wholesome. They think of Jared. Yeah. They're like, Subway's not sexy. Yeah, Subway's Jared. It's not sexy. <laughs> Sorry, Jared. Um, side note, GoDaddy is changing their marketing strategy. They're not going to be doing the sex-based marketing allegedly anymore. Yeah. They probably reached that saturation point where it's like, well, if we want to get past here, we're going to have to do something different. Anyway, tasteless. totally off topic. Yeah, tasteless marketing. Tasteless marketing like a Subway self. <laughs> So anyway, you know, looking back on these three commercials, what are some of your key takeaways today on Halloween marketing for our listeners out there? Well, as always, I always say have fun. And I think that's throughout the whole year you can have fun with your marketing. But, you know, especially in Halloween marketing, you'd have uh, even more fun. You can have the most fun. Don't be afraid to do something different than you've been doing. Because like I said before, Halloween is that one time of year that you have the ability to experiment. So and then be timely. You know, think about the actual holiday. And use your concept to revolve around that. And then think about your audience and what humor concept they will get. And they will get well, you know, because like Subway, they get it and they didn't like it. But, you know. Yeah, good tip. And I really don't have much to add to that. I mean, beyond, you know, you kind of hit all the key points. It's time to do something fun. Everybody in general, you look at how people are dressing up and stuff. Things are getting a little weird and wild. So you have room to play in that domain. Within your brand, though, keep your... Have that concept, you know, have that concept that plays off Halloween and then make sure you tie that to your message. The Geico ad did a good job of that. Final takeaway there is just don't do what Subway did. (laughs) And I want to clarify, I think, because maybe we're making it sound like it was way farther off base than it was. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a huge controversy, but it did get pulled in a lot of spots, like you said. So I think they even realized, ooh, we're getting some negative backlash on this. So no, it had. I mean, it clearly has some problems, so. Let's yeah. not say it's it's the worst thing and what you should do the opposite of, but keep those audiences in mind, people. Keep those audiences in mind. Well, with that said, Chad, you know, it's time to put a stake in today's show. <laughs> you can find still breathing episodes of the podcast and corpses of past episodes at speakinghuman.com. You can also sell your soul to us by subscribing to the Speaking Human podcast in the iTunes store. Email us with your screams and cries for help or any comments at all. Feedback at thinkmonsters.com. That's feedback at thinkmonsters.com. We'll emerge from our graves in two weeks with another episode of Speaking Human. Catch you then, humans. Speaking Human. (laughs) 
Uh, ha, 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 ha.